Come have your way in our midst today, Jehovah. Come and throw your place in our midst today, Jesus. Come and take your place, Jesus. We usher you into this place today. Hallelujah. We give you all the glory and all the praise.
What shall I render to Jehovah? For he has done so very much for me. Now I know I The tree of life, I got me, boo, hallelujah, boo, hallelujah, papa, oh, don't make a tribute, oh, go, be a dima, I got me, boo, hallelujah, boo, hallelujah, papa, on this avenue, you are the God of the heaven. You are my God, you will be with me. I thank you, Jesus. You are beginning at the end. I me Yeah. 
shelter, my promoter, mighty Jesus, awesome Father, I worship you, you are the awesome God, yes, you are awesome God. Specialist, 
extraordinary strategist. You're seated in heaven. You have made the earth your footstool. Incredible God. Impossibility, impossibility specialist. Extraordinary strategist, you're seated in heaven. You have made the earth your footstool, incredible God. Oh, incredible God, you're an incredible God. Incredible God, you're an incredible God. Call your maker incredible, incredible God, you're an incredible God, you're an incredible Incredible God, incredible God, you are incredible God, oh, incredible God, oh, incredible God, you are incredible God, yeah, incredible God. Oh, incredible God, you are incredible God. Oh, incredible God, incredible God, you are incredible God. Incredible God, incredible God, you are incredible God. Oh. Incredible God, you are incredible God. The same God that led us from January to this October that just ended and into November. He is an incredible God. Oh, incredible God. Incredible God. He's an incredible God. Oh, incredible God. That's who he is, he's an incredible God. Oh, incredible God, yeah, incredible God. He's an incredible God, incredible God, incredible 
incredible God. He's an incredible God. He will do incredible things for you and your household. He's an incredible God. Incredible God. Incredible God. He's a superlative God. He's a superlative God. He's incredible God. He is an awesome mighty God. He's an awesome mighty God. Incredible God. Brethren, just lift up your hands wherever you are. Let's just join the heaven host. Let us join the heaven host to worship God. Let us join the angels of God to give him praise and exalt him this hour. Father, we thank you. We give you praise. We exalt your holy name is shent of this. We declare in our song that you are an incredible God. You are a superlative God. You are a powerful God. You are almighty God. Words cannot describe you. You are just indescribable in your glory. We worship you. We adore you. We glorify your name, ancient of this. Be thou exalted, King of kings. Be thou exalted, Lord of lords. Glory be to your name in the name of Jesus Christ. In just one minute or two, let just one, I want us to thank God. Thank God for January, February, March, April, and May, and June, and July, August, September, October, and now November. Let us lift up our voice, wherever you are. Just lift up your voice and appreciate God. The heart of gratitude, God appreciates. So let's just appreciate God. Father, we thank you. We just want to thank you. We just want to appreciate you. We want to we just want to give you all the praise, all the glory for keeping and preserving us, for protecting us, for fighting and defending us, for preserving our household, for preserving our children, for preserving our church, for preserving everyone that is connected to us. We want to say thank you, Lord Jesus. Glory be to your name, honor be to your name. Blessed be your name, a saint of this. And I want you to thank God for the month of November, which he has brought us in. So I want you to lift up your voice and appreciate because Father, we thank you for this month, this first day in the first day of the month of November, 2020. Lord, we want to say thank you in the name of Jesus. That mighty hand of God has God has brought us this far. He will take us to where he has proposed for us. In the name of Jesus. Glory and honor be to your name. Blessed be your name, King of Kings. In the name of Jesus Christ. We give you praise. We give you glory. We give you honor this morning in the name of Jesus. Ascent of this, we thank you. We bless your name this morning now because you are worthy to be praised. In Jesus' matchless name, we have given thanks. Amen. Hallelujah. Brothers and sisters, you are welcome to this, today's service. You are welcome whoever you are, wherever you are watching from all over the world. You are welcome in the name of Jesus. This is Royal Christian Center. And as we, you know, fellowship this morning, as we have communion this morning, your life and our life will never remain the same again in the name of Jesus. I want to appreciate those who have ministered in, in, in the teaching of Bible study and also minister in songs and praise. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord increase you. May the Lord anoint you more and more to, to change your world through songs and worship and the teaching of God's word. May the Lord keep you in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless every one of us. For those of us who joined us last night when we had our crossover prayer, our, our, our commanding the month prayer, I told us according to the Bible, Isaiah chapter 14, Isaiah chapter 14, reading verse 24 and 27. I told God that the Lord of hosts has sworn, saying, surely as I have taught, so shall it come to pass. And as I have proposed, so shall it stand. And I want you to know that God has sworn concerning you. He has taught. He has taught for you. The Bible says he has a good thought for you. Taught to prosper you. Taught to bless you. Taught to give you your expected end. Our expected end is to end up in heaven with Jesus Christ. That is our expected end. God has have taught for you that this will be our end. And I pray that that will be your end in the name of Jesus. You will not run this race in vain. And in verse 27, and he said, for the Lord of hosts has proposed, God has proposed, 
And no one can annul what God has proposed in your life. That's what he says in verse 27. Isaiah 14, verse 27. God has proposed, and no one can annul it. And his hand has stretched out to keep you, to protect you, to fight for you. The hand of God is stretched out to fight for you. The hand of God is stretched out to bless you. The hand of God is stretched out to defend you. And do you know what? Nothing can cut short that hand. Nothing can stop that hand of God upon your life. And that's why I prophesy over you, my brother, my sister, listening to me, that the hand of God has been stretched out to keep you. The hand of God has been stretched out to preserve your household. The hand of God has been stretched out to protect you and nothing can stop it. So that is why I am rest assured that you will see the end of November. The same way you saw the end of October, you will see the end of November in the name of Jesus. If the devil has whispered to you that you will not see the end of it, he is a liar. He has always been a liar. Lying is his mother tongue. Therefore, the word of God stands concerning you for God has proposed and nothing can annul it. That's what, what that, that, that's our direction of prayer last night. But this morning, we will take a different dimension. Amen. We will take a different dimension. And as we take that dimension, you will be blessed in Jesus' name. Just before I quickly go into it, I want to advise at the end of this service, because this is our fourth day, first Sunday, normally you know what we do when we are in, 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 our, in, our, in a church auditorium, we say Thanksgiving Sunday, still is a Thanksgiving Sunday, but I still want to allow us to give our testimonies. So if you have a testimony, if you're listening to me, you have a testimony, you've been itching, the, I want to share this testimony. At the end of this short message, I will give you opportunity to say your testimony. So let us, you know, even still in virtual church and in church online, thank God. So if you have a testimony, if you have something you want to thank God for, I want you to keep it down. If you don't want to share it, if you don't want to say it, you can type it and we will receive it and we will celebrate with you. We will pray with you. We will, we will join you in celebrating and thanking God for what the Lord has done. So please, if you have a testimony at the end of the service, I will give you opportunity to say your testimony. And then if you don't want to share it, you want to just type it, just type it. And then we will receive it. And as you do so, God will bless you. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Quickly, I want to share with us, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I ask that your word come alive. I ask that you minister to us through your word, a shent of days. Holy Spirit, you are the giver of your word. You are the teacher. You are the explainer of your word. I ask that you explain your word to us this morning in the name of Jesus Christ, that anyone listening, oh God, will, will, will receive the word of God, the engrafted word of God that is able to save. Lord, let it come alive. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. God speaks well of you, brother, sister. You know, as we journey in this Christian journey, we, 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 we go through ups and downs. We go through issues in our life. And if we are not careful, if we are not worth it, people, one of the prayers we pray last night, you see, not being a worded Christian, not being a Christian that is full of God's word is a kind of a limitation to you. And we pray every prayerlessness, every wordlessness that causes us to be limited in the things God wants to do with you or do with us or do with the church, let it be taken out of the way. So it is important for us to be worded, grounded in the word of God. Because if you're not grounded in the word of God, you will make mistakes and you will even fall. So my prayer for you is not for you to fall. My prayer is not for us to fall on the wayside. You know, I was, yes, last night I was watching something my wife brought to my attention about, you know, what was, what, what you know, somebody is just putting on the television and the whole place is packed full, packed full in thousands and see aren't ignorant, aren't ignorant of God's word. People don't know this word. And I know and I want to believe that no, none of our church members will fall prey to the things that are not of the word of God. That's why it is important for you to be part of Bible study, for you to be part, even if you think you've known it, sit down there and listen. It's discipline, you know. So it is important for us to grow in the word of God. Learn it, know it, so that you will not be deceived. 
this place is packed and the, 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 the person ministering is actually not anything about the Bible. It's nothing about the Bible. It's just about, you know, things that are not of God. And I wonder why the whole place is packed for. Because what? People are not, even when it's so glaring that this is power from the pit of hell, people can no longer see it anymore. Why? Because they lack the word. They lack the word of God. And I pray that you will not fall prey to such thing. That you will be that man, that woman God will use to open the eyes of men and women out there and pray them out of ignorance. Pray them out of bondage. Pray them out of chains of the wicked in the name of Jesus. But how can that be done if you are not learning the word of God? That's why we, we put so much effort in the word of God in this local assembly. So I trust that God will help us. To come to that point where we understand who we are, how we understand who we are in Christ Jesus, what God is to us and how we can carry on, you know, being his, his children and doing his will in the name of Jesus Christ. Hear this, my brothers and sisters. God is not interested in your Adamic nature, the nature which we inherited from Adam. I say it again, God is not that, that that's why I tag this message, God speaks well of you. The reason why God speaks well of you, he is not interested in your fallen state. God is not interested in our fallen state. God is interested in our regenerated state in Christ Jesus. God is interested in, uh, in, 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 in us who have accepted Jesus Christ as his Lord, as our Lord and as our personal Savior. You see, that position which he has put us, that is what God is interested. So that's why when God looked up, when God looked on you, when God sees you, you sees you in the in the in, in, in the periscope of that position which he has put you. He sees you in that in that light which he has put you through his son Jesus Christ. There is nothing glorifying with Adamic nature. Adamic nature is a fallen state. Adamic nature is a fallen nature which we inherited from Adam. And there's nothing glorifying God about it. So that's why God will not eulogize it. God will not, you know, glorify. God, there's, there's no glory in that. But God glories our God glories in the fact that he sent his son, Jesus Christ, and you accept his son. And by accepting his son, you reposition yourself. You are accepting the righteousness of, uh, the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And as a result, he puts you in a certain position. Can we go to Romans chapter 6? Romans chapter 6. In Christ, our Adamic nature died. Remember, I started this message saying our Adamic nature, there's nothing to glorify God in it. Therefore, God does not look at it. He doesn't look at your Adamic nature. Rather, he looks at this, the, the, the newness, the newness in Christ Jesus he has given unto us. That's what he looks at. And in, in, in Romans chapter 6, verse reading from verse 6 to 11, or wherever the Holy Spirit may help us get to, we can see there that God is interested in the, this new nature he has given unto us. Let me read for us. Romans 6, reading from verse 6. Knowing this, knowing this, that our old man was crucified with him. In other words, the, our, our Adamic nature was crucified with Christ. That the body of sin might be, might be done away. With that, we should no longer be slaves to sin. Verse 7, for he who has died has been freed from sin. So our Adamic nature was crucified with Christ Jesus. And therefore, if he was crucified with Christ Jesus, that means we died with Christ Jesus. And if that is, if that is we died with Christ Jesus, which means we are freed from the power and the influence of sin. Verse 8, now, if we died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. If you and I died with Christ, the Adamic nature in us died with Christ, that nature that is sinful, that fallen nature of man was dead in Christ Jesus, in other words, it means we live with Christ when Christ resurrected. Verse 9, knowing that Christ, having been raised from the dead, dies no more, 
death no longer has dominion over him. Christ rose up. Therefore, death has no dominion over him. The same way death has no dominion over you. Now we live, the life we live now, we live in Christ Jesus. Amen. Verse 10. He said, for death that he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life that we live, he lives to God. Verse 11. Likewise you. He's talking about Jesus from verse 9 to verse 10. He's talking about Jesus dying and then the life that he lives, he lives in, in God. And then in verse 11, he's trying to put you, impute you into the death and resurrection of Christ. He says, likewise you also reckon yourselves to be dead indeed to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Therefore, do not let sin reign over you in your mortal body that you should obey it in, your, in its lust. Amen. What a powerful scripture that is. We were dead with Christ. The nature of sin died with Christ. And because of that, we are freed. And now Christ rose up again. Our Lord Jesus rose up again. So as he rises up, we rose up with him. And the life now we live, we're not living in our own ability again, but we are living in the ability of Christ who rose from the dead. Brothers and sisters, that is the light through which God sees you. God, I say it again, God does not see you through the light of, the, the light of your Adamic nature, the fallen nature, because there's nothing glorified. It is called unregenerated nature of man. Praise God. God does not see us in that light, but he sees us in the light of the resurrection of his son. He sees us in the light of the resurrection of his son because anytime we, are, we come to Jesus Christ, we die with him and we rose with him. And the life we have now, we have it in Christ Jesus. That is the way God sees you. And that is the way God speaks concerning you. If you look at the Bible, when God speaks, he doesn't speak the situation. He speaks his word. He speaks the end from the beginning. He looked at Gideon. He's a mighty man, but at the time Gideon was afraid and fearing and, 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 and was afraid of the Midianites. Praise God. But God called him mighty man. Why? Because God is looking at his word. God is looking at the end from the beginning. And the same way applicable to you, son of God, child of God. God looks at you from the perspective of the finished work of Calvary. He looked at you from the perspective of the work that Jesus did on your behalf. And that is where he's seeing you. Praise God. And when we, walk, when, we, when we carry ourselves and see ourselves from that perspective, it will help us. The Bible said in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, said, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is now a new creature. God sees you from that new creature point of view. He sees you from that new nature of yours. We have in Christ Jesus because all things have passed away and all things have become new, new in Christ Jesus. That is where God sees you. Hallelujah. And the Bible told us in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 6, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 6, that God declared about Jesus Christ. Let's go to that scripture, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 6. Go with me to Ephesians chapter 2, verse 6. And I read, and I said, and read us up together. So when Christ died and resurrected, we resurrected with him. And he rose us up together and made us sit together with him. He made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Brothers and sisters, this is how God sees you. This is how God sees us. He rose up and made us sit together with Christ. That is how God sees you and I. And I want you to have that perspective. Do you know what? I, 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 I want to I conclude in this direction. Why do God see us from that perspective? That we rose with his son, Jesus Christ. We rose with, with Christ. And he has seated us in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. That is how God sees see us. What is that? That is position. That is the position God has put you and I. Amen. I remember I told you, God sees you from the finished work. 
God sees you from your end. God, God works from the end to the beginning. While we human beings, we walk from beginning to the end. Yes, that is what we know about. But God walks from the end. That is why he looks at you. He looks at his plan and purpose. Remember, he said he has purpose concerning you. He has thought concerning you. There is a thought of God. There is a purpose of God concerning you. And that purpose is in Christ Jesus. He has positioned us because he raised us up with his son, Jesus Christ. And he enthroned us to sit with him at the right hand side of majesty. That is the position God has put you and I in. And that is where he's seeing you from. Where am I going with this? When you begin to see what God sees, then you begin to do the right thing. Somebody say amen. I say it again. When you begin to see yourself from the point God sees you, from the position God has positioned you, then you will be able to begin to do the right thing. Amen. He said, we are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. That is what God is seeing about you. But if you look at yourself now, it might not look like that. It might not look like that. Then what do you do? You begin to see yourself from that perspective which God has seen you. When you see yourself from that perspective, then you can begin to change your dealings, your workings, the things you do to reflect how God sees you. Am I making sense? Am I, am, I, am, I, am, I, am I transmitting to somebody? God sees us this way. The righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And here you are. You are not seeing yourself that way. Because of the evidences of things around you. Because of the things you are doing. Now, for us to come here where God sees us or how God sees us. We need to begin to see ourselves with the eyes of God. When we begin to see ourselves with the eyes of God or how God sees us, then we can begin to align our dealings, our workings, the things we do, the things we say, our dealings, whatever we do, we begin to align that with what God says and what God says we are. Therefore, that is when your righteousness in Christ Jesus will begin to match with your activity, with your workings, with who you are, with what you say we were dealing. Your dealings will now begin to match to reflect who you are in Christ Jesus. Can somebody say amen to that? Hallelujah. The Bible says we are complete in Christ. We are perfect in Christ. Colossians chapter 2 verse 10. We are complete in him without blemish. And that is how God sees you and I, that you are complete in him without blemish. We are complete in Christ without blemish. Amen. Where am I going with all of this? Where I'm going is, you see, when you understand the workings of grace, the grace of God, not by our power, not by our might, but by the grace of God, we are who we are in Christ Jesus. When you understand the grace, when you walk by the grace, when you walk with God, then you are walking from righteousness, who as God sees you, you are walking from the point how God sees you, and that will change everything about you. The day you gave your life to Christ, the day you accepted Jesus, and th this message is for those who sincerely have accepted Jesus as their Lord and their personal Savior. And I want you to know how God sees you. And then if you have not accepted Jesus as your Lord and your personal Savior, let this message, you know, spur you up to say, let, let me go and enjoy this same thing this will I enjoy, so that God will see me this way. So brethren, brothers and sisters, God sees you this way. When we walk from grace, when we walk from righteousness, it now becomes, it's not about our, our work, our works again. Because our salvation is not by works. It's by the grace of God in Christ Jesus. But, hear this. If people are walking this way, they want to walk from, I want to do things right so that I can please God, so that I can receive righteousness of righteousness of, of Jesus, the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. When we walk from that point, then that becomes works. And you know, when it is about your works, your works is a fleshly work and the Bible says it's like a filthy rag before God. It is like a filthy rag before God. So that is why religious people want to walk from flesh. 
They want to walk from doing the works themselves. And as soon as you begin to do the works themselves, you are, you are disqualified. It's not accepted because what? The whole of that, your works, even if it happens to be 100%, which it cannot be, it's not acceptable before God. So that is why walkings cannot end you salvation. Your walkings and dealings cannot end you the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. The only thing that can end you is grace of God, faith in Christ Jesus puts us and brings us in the position of righteousness where God has put you. When you're in that position, you are in a position where God has placed you because of his dear son, Jesus Christ, because of the works of Calvary he did for you. And when you key into that by faith, you are put in a position. And then we walk from that position, position of righteousness. When you walk from that position, how God sees you, then that will help you begin to align your character, align your dealings, align your, your behavior, align everything to be in the line of God, to be in the line which God have, you know, you know, aligned you, has put you in this position. When you walk in that way, that is what is called grace because you have been given what you're not qualified. We've been given righteousness. We've been given his grace. We've been given all of these things. For we're not, we didn't do anything to earn it. All we did is to extend our faith to the finished work of Calvary, and then you are qualified. Then from that moment, you begin to align yourself to represent who God says you are. Somebody say amen. Ephesians chapter 1, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 1. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 1. I will close with that. Amen. God has put us in this position, in this position of righteousness. He has put us in this position where he sees us differently. And I want us to begin to see ourselves that way. When you see yourself in that light, then that changes your mentality. That changes the way you deal with people. That changes your behavior. That changes your character to align with character of a righteous man. Amen. Hallelujah. Ephesians chapter 4, I close with this. Ephesians chapter 4, and I read from verse 1. I, therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, of the Lord, beseech you to walk worthy of the calling with which you have been called. Let us dissect that scripture. Apostle Paul said, I beseech you, brethren, as a prisoner, of our Lord Jesus Christ. He said, he wants us to walk worthy of the call. See, the walking, the, the, the call comes before the walking. That's what I've been trying to teach all this time. The call came before the walking because it's grace. You are, you don't merit it. You didn't work for it. We did not work for it, but we received this call, a high call. A high call of God. God has called you into this fold of righteousness. He has called you into this fold, into this son's kingdom. And he has called us. After that call, Apostle Paul said, I beseech you, brethren, let us walk worthy of the call. That is grace. We, you, you receive a gift. You receive something. And then you appreciate that gift by the way you behave, by the way you talk. By, by the way you express your character and behavior, so that your character and behavior will align with this calling. That's all the message is all about. And that is how God is seeing you, son of God, daughter of God, child of God, listening to me this morning. See the way God sees you. When you see this way God sees you, it will help you to align your character. It will help you to walk the walk worthy of your call. Amen. Hallelujah. It will help you to walk this walk worthy of your call. When we walk from the position God has given to us, then to responsibility, position of righteousness and the responsibility of that righteousness. When you walk from that position to responsibility, that is grace. But when you walk from responsibility, okay, you know, you walk from resp responsibility to righteousness, that is works and is not acceptable before God. If you want to end righteousness by your works, 
If you want to earn righteousness by your deeds, you cannot because your righteousness is fleshly, not accepted. The Bible says it's like a filter act before God. But when we walk from this position of righteousness, to walk the walk worthy of our call, which is the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, then is grace of God. Somebody say amen. And I pray that that will be an understanding that will help you walk your Christian race, that will help you in this journey, that will help you to, to, to fight against the condemnation of the devil. I am who God says I am. I am who God says I am. There's a songwriter that writes that, 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 that sings that song. I am who God says I am. I am a winner, not a loser. That is how God sees you. And I pray you will continue to be a winner in Christ Jesus. You will continue to be a winner in Christ Jesus. You will not lose in the name of Jesus. Your faith in Christ Jesus will continue to propel you to do what right things. Your faith in Christ Jesus will continue to propel you to behave right. Your faith in Christ Jesus will continue to propel us to do the right thing in the name of Jesus Christ. You are who God says you are. God speaks well of you because he's speaking from the righteousness of his son, Jesus Christ. God speaks great of you because he's seeing you from the finished worker, not from what you have done in the name of Jesus. And if you see yourself that way, then your work will begin to be aligned according to your call. That is what Apostle Paul was trying to explain to them in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 1. I beseech you, brethren, walk, walk. Walk the walk so that you would justify the call of God upon your life. When you walk in a way that agrees with the call, you're not walking so that you'll be called. Hear this. Apostle Paul said, you're not walking the walk so that you'll be called by God. No, you are already called by God. And now let your dealings and your walkings agree with the call. That's what Apostle Paul is saying. And I pray for you, so shall be for you in the name of Jesus. You will walk the walk as a righteous man in Christ Jesus. And people will see Jesus in you as you do your daily walks in Jesus' name. Can we bow our head in prayer? Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray this man, Lord God, that we will begin to see ourselves the way you see us. We will begin to see how you see us, oh God. We'll begin to walk this walk because you have brought us to a position. You have kept us in this position of righteousness. All we need to align with you. Let our walk agree with the call of God upon our lives. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you and we give you praise. I pray out, Lord God, that this word of God will enrich your children. It will bless them. We will expand the wisdom of God upon their life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen.